Well, our initial project, ladies and gentlemen, was called uh, Seeds of Hope, and that has now morphed into Seedlings of Hope. And ladies and gentlemen, I hope that I can explain that transition to you. Our goal is really to develop cultivars adapted to low input rural agriculture in Latin America. There are specific adaptations that can be achieved. And we, this is a, a small farmer. Our hope, ladies and gentlemen, is that we can work with women's groups not only to develop production, but also to develop seeds and seedlings as a production strategy. Technology drives cooperative businesses. Our activities are, we've evaluated dozens and hundreds of, of different varieties of resistance to virus. We have field days and training. Our theme is technology, hands-on experience, and knowledge. Here's one of our cooperators. This is Marta, and she has a field day with, a, with an array of farmers, and what they're doing is an evaluating not only for virus resistance, but also evaluating for quality characteristics and yield. And here's another group from Tajumulco in, uh, in Guatemala, and uh, there's me in the lower left hand explaining just how, just how big a tomato can be if, you, <laughs> if they're grafted. No, not really. One of, our, one of our, I don't know if this is an impact or a result, ladies and gentlemen, but, but certainly within the region we were able to identify cultivars that, uh, that, that combined virus resistance with the desirable market characteristics that were important. The impact is that these cultivars are being grown and sold by women's groups, but not as seeds, as I originally envisioned, but rather as seedlings. So now we, that's why we call our project Plantula. However, there's a problem. We do have resistance to Gemini virus, but we do not have resistance to many of the soil-borne pathogens. So the dilemma for me was how do I combine resistance to both virus and soil pathogens? And one of the solutions to that is not a genetic hybrid, ladies and gentlemen, but rather a physical hybrid. Graft the virus-resistant cyan onto a root pathogen-resistant rootstock. So the original business model for the women's groups was to sell flats of virus-resistant seedlings. The new business model is to develop and sell flats of value-added grafted plants. The question is, how much is the cost? Our first, uh, first goal was to do some training, and we had one of the wonderful things about the Innovation Lab is that we can bring in the world's experts, and here we had a grafting workshop in Zamorano, with Mike Kleinhens, and here they are again. These are the, the people from the Innovation Center, and they were grafting, grafting tomatoes with our, with our cooperators in the region. So a shout out to you. Thank you very much. Here's some of the data. This is, from, uh, this is some leverage data. We don't support uh, the Instituto Tecnologico, but they grafted. And I remember when the young lady called me up and she said, uh, Jaime, she said, Many of the plants are dead. Well, the dead ones were the ones that were, in fact, not grafted. And you can see here that the non-grafted plants, that's to the lower right, were actually dead, and the grafted plants were the only ones that actually survived uh, in this particular experiment, and the roots were fine. We just got the data last week from uh, a large trial we did at Zamorano, and this graph represents the percent increase in yield of the grafted plants compared to the non-grafted the grafted combinations, ladies and gentlemen, provide a 100% increase. And those rootstocks are available as many as open pollinated cultivars. We also have some lines from Taki. We've done some breeding. We've, we've bred some lines. And we have some lines from Hawaii. Where's our friend from Hawaii? So the bottom line is that grafting works. And so our, our dream is that these women's groups will not only be able to produce these grafted plants as a as a business, right? So the value added would be translated to the growers. I have to give a, a shout out again to our, to our colleagues at, at Rhino Research. We can't produce grafted plants without quality seeds, and we do that using your beads, drying bead technology. So thank you very much, and for Kent Bradford as well. So our technology, ladies and gentlemen, is, is an ancient technology. It is grafted tomato seedlings. 
And we have science resistant to virus, we have rootstock resistant to soil pathogens, and our goal now is to try to develop this into value-added businesses. Thank you.